Today, the AFN team hit a Melbourne estuary and target brim and dewfish on lures. We also hit the New South Wales trout lakes and chase fish on sinking bibless lures. Urban estuaries have the potential to produce some awesome fishing. Bill Classen and Brad Hodges show us how to use lures to unlock some of that hidden potential. Today, I'm fishing with Brad Hodges, a local brim pro who regularly fishes the Werribee two to three times a month. So what have we got here, basically flats? Yeah, it's, it's really shallow near the, near the poles. <clears throat> and uh, then it just drops down into about eight foot of water. We're sitting in about five foot, so it's just a little channel that sort of runs through the middle, and then it's really shallow out, out to the other side. So it's the only holding place at low tide is really in the channel, so hopefully. There's a whole heap of mullet and stuff that are already splashing on the surface, so. Where'd you get that on? That's on a turtleback, this one. Oh, you went uh, back to the turtleback? Yeah, just, so it's on a pumpkin seed. First wear a big brim for the morning. There we go. Pretty much on the drop, so. Yeah. Little curl tail just wiggles all the way down to the bottom and fish must just see it sort of just going down to the bottom and there's a whole heap of weed and stuff down there, so it looks like the Worm's trying to get away into the weed and he's picked it up, so it's a good sign. Alright, so we're just going to change from a, using a turtle back to a six inch camo worm made by Berkeley. It's pretty much the perfect representation of a, of a sandworm or a tube worm. What I like to do is just take off maybe the first two or three centimetres. So I'll just chop that off either with a pair of scissors or fingernails works. You can bite it if you uh, like the taste of gulp. And then what you're trying to do is run the hook as straight as possible just down the back of the, of the worm. Reason being, you need the, the worm swimming pretty much 100% straight in the water. Um, if it's not swimming straight, it's not going to look natural. And from there, once you've rigged that nice and straight, when you start putting your twitches in, the, the tail is just going to wriggle up and down and if you've ever seen a sandworm swim in the water all, right, all they do is just sort of waggle from side to side so you want to rep, uh, replicate that sort of action when you're working your lure. Now you're saying to me before low tide early morning and you can see all the, all the mud flats out here yep. which you said is full of full of worm. Yeah definitely there's a lot of sandworm a lot of tube worms when, when the tide moves up the brim will sort of move up there so that's, yep. that's the plan for a bit later. So um, low tide, we're just fishing this channel. We've just yeah. got a drop off here. Nice little drop off. It goes. Yeah. It's it's really shallow under the boat. We're, we're yeah, just sitting, we're just actually just sitting, sitting on the on the sitting weed on the and, the, and the mud, and it drops down into five or six, seven foot yeah. um, as it goes out. But it's it's quite a um, a small channel. So the other sides are quite a long, yeah. uh, shallow mud flat, and you would assume that the fish will come off the flats and, and sit in the channel. So at low tide. Well, yeah. They're just going to be out in this channel. Yeah, As the tide really. goes up, they're going to be onto these flats here. That's right. That's where right. all the sandworms are. No way. Oh, he's on. That possibly could be a dewy. <laughs> oh, no way. His head shaking. Definitely, that is taken off. That it? is definitely a dewy. Those head shakes. Yeah. Early morning on the Werribee River, fishing for Bryn with a mate of mine, Brad Hodges, and we thought, Brad, we were a slight chance for a mulloway. Yeah, yeah, they found. Um... And we reckon we might have hooked one here. but certainly not a Bryn. Yeah, the plan was to sort of kill a couple of hours just while the tide was turning. Um, and yeah, if there's ever a chance to sort of hook a mull away, it is, it is that during that tide change. Uh, so it's low tide at the moment, maybe half an hour either side where there's really not much flow. That's when they seem to come out of their hiding hole and, and feed a little bit. 
Whereas the brim do exactly the opposite. Mate, you watch this when he sees so. the boat. <laughs> oh yeah, what a lovely fish. Wow. Hey? That's not Ooh. just a little mulloway what either. A that's, cracker. that's a nice 80 centimeter yeah. mulloway. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is just use the lecky to, to chase him down. Um, the bill's got him under under control pretty well at the moment. But you might even be able to see him in the water there. He's just sort of hovering. What a fish. Yeah, I reckon. Oh, headship Bradley, here we go. <laughs> Unbelievably. Uh, hooked, a, hooked a really nice dewy. Um, just using a six inch camo worm, we just changed over. And here he, he is. is. Just get oh, his he's head around. around. He's not oh, got him. Oh, goodness. Hey, mate. <laughs> Good on ya. Where would be Mulloway? Nothing better. I reckon that's all of four kilos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> My first fish in the Werribee River, and yeah, it doesn't western get... side of Port Phillip Bay, as good a little estuary mulloway as you could get in Victoria. Sure. Not big for New South Wales, but I can tell you, for down here, that is a cracker. Yeah, the Werribee's not known for its, its joys. And oh, you were saying to me you've only ever caught two in here. I've fished here a long time, <laughs> um, and only ever caught two, so. Mate, um, that yeah. is awesome. Some people get all the luck. Six inch sandworm? Yep. Nothing better. You know, mate, I've been fishing 45 years. <laughs> 45? Okay? Yep. And you know, in the last five years. Oh, he's dropped another one. <laughs> I have been amazed when I'm lure fishing how many fish you catch when you don't retrieve. Yes. I mean, if I could give anyone a hint, if you're fishing with a lure, and you're not catching fish, go stop slow. retrieving. Go slow. 90% oh, of the fish or the, or the brim that you catch will be on the paws. Um, you assume that the, the lure retrieve is, is what attracts them, but when the lure stops, whether it's a hard body or a plastic, when it's sinking down to the bottom or when it just stops on the bottom or a, or a suspended hard body, when it's just sitting motionless in the water column, that's when you'll get all your bites. So very few fish come when you're moving the lure, but you have to move the lure to get the get a little bit of action so that the fish come over and have a look. Very nice. What um, he is a good fish. Because of the, the low tide, they're just sort of sitting right down on the bottom, and the, the, the slower we work it, the better it is at the moment. Yeah. But have a look at that. Mate, I just I might put the rod away and just hold the net for you. The yeah, way you go. Right, mate. <laughs> I aren't fishing, they're just, they're just sitting. Yeah, the water's really nice and clear at the moment. I suppose the lighter we can go in the leader using four pound and, and it, might yeah. even, it might even drop down to, to three and two pounds, depending on how they feed a bit later, but. Got a bit of toe to him. Good yeah, on you, mate. Very good. Thanks. All right, there you go. Cool. Get my line out of the way. So what would you call that for at a comp? Ah, oh, that's probably a good 750 gram sort of, sort okay. of fish. Um, yeah, good good quality for around Melbourne. You get you get five of those around Melbourne, you're going to be going to be very happy. Yeah. But um, they're really good condition at the moment. There's he's almost scale perfect that fish, isn't yeah. he? He's, he's just beautiful. Absolutely uh, lovely. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. So fishing the Werribee, what would be your favourite hard body? Um, favourite hard body. There's a bite. Missed it. Um, at the moment would be the it's a Berkeley. It's called a three B puppy dog, and uh, they're just a little suspending hard body, about forty five mil long. Just the way that it, it suspends in the water, it just sort of tilts its head up a little bit and just slowly sort of floats towards the surface. And that's not many lures sort of do that. They sort of quite a few sort of float up tail first, which you don't really see too many bait fish floating tail first. But the um, puppy dog just seems to get slammed on the paws. Which... And there's one. Yeah, good. Just while you sat down there, mate, I've, I've changed lure. I've, um, oh, I've gone to a little hard body. Have you? It's called a it's called a sub dog, and it's it's effectively a stick minnow, and it just sinks slowly down to the bottom. And where it gets its action from is when you when you lift it up, it sort of darts off like a little bit of a um, a bait fish, and then it just sinks dead straight all the way down yeah, to the okay. bottom. So. We were talking before about less action, and this on the drop has virtually no action, which brim really like. Okay, so that's that's the brim there. Probably another 700 gram fish. Really good colours on this one though, and he's you know really bronzed. Uh, they they like to sit down deep in the weed, and I think that's where they get their colour from. But uh, the lure you can see in his mouth, it's called a, a, a sub dog. 
and the, that colour is a mongrel. And the, it's sort of a little bit translucent, a little bit brown, and it has a nice little uh, orange underbelly. And a lot of the brim lures that, that a lot of the brim tournament anglers use, they, they have that sort of orange flash underneath and it just seems to get a reaction out of the fish. Had a couple of bites. Just had to slow everything down a little bit, just let it sit on the bottom. and Again, just using a little uh, sub dog, it's just a stick minnow, it just sinks down slowly. This one's quite small, I might just lift it in. But seems to be quite a few um, schooled up at the moment. I've just had a bit of a look at the sounder and there's quite a few arches down there and they're, they're quite thick, so only sitting in about eight foot of water. Just sinking these guys down, it only takes a couple of seconds for these lures to get down to the bottom. Let it sit on the bottom for a couple of seconds and then just hop it up, let it sink back down. And that's when these guys will just follow it back down and, and generally they'll pick it up off the bottom. There's one. Our very next cast. Uh, just had a look at the sounder and there's, there's a lot of fish down there. Uh, working the sub dog just gently off the bottom. And a Werribee River fish. Got a really nice gold colour to him. That mate is awesome. <laughs> That's a really good looking that fish. That is a good fish. Alright this is this is probably a, a kilo uh, brim out of the Werribee River. When you're brim fishing especially with lures it doesn't get much better than a, than a kilo uh, fish. Uh, this guy's got really nice colours. Again, just taking on that sub dog, just sinking it slowly down to the bottom, a couple of hops. And uh, they seem to be loving it at the moment. <laughs> and there it goes. Right. This one I didn't even get to uh, work the lure at all, he's just grabbed it on the drop. He's playing up a bit. Another good fish? It feels like it. Bill's just changed over to a sub dog as well. So. Oh, look at that, what a great, ha oh, ha oh, oh. oh, awesome size brim. They are very nice, aren't they? Oh, sorry mate. There you go, bud. So that fish, being so close to the bay, it's probably been out in the clearer water in the bay or maybe down this end of the river. Yeah, bit. for sure, that's, that's what oh, I'd be assuming fish. is, you know, compare this to the, to the previous fish that we've caught. And this guy's a totally different color to him. He's really silver. So you'd assume he's been out on the sand flats, maybe out the front, or you know, even maybe travel it across from one of the little creeks and that sort of stuff. Bang. Well, Brad, thanks. Yeah. My first Mulloway in Melbourne. It's uh, yeah, absolutely a, 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 awesome. Absolute pleasure, Bill. So. And some cracker brim too. I've got to tell you, Werribee River, I'll certainly be back here in the near future. Casting and retrieving lipless crankbaits is an underutilised technique when it comes to chasing freshwater trout in Australia. Knight Webster discovers just how successful it can be. Oh, yep, 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 yes. Oh, I lost it. Ah. First light bite. Oh, got the drill and Russian now. I'm fishing with the little lipless crankbait. Beautifully tailored for situations like this, chasing trout. They'll be awesome in the estuaries. For the moment, I'm testing out some of these very handy little trout colours on some of the Snowy Mountains locals. In the first couple of casts, I reckon they just might like them. Yes, it's a good fish. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is a good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Come on. Here. Big brown. I've cast this little lipless right up into the back tussocks. One little hop. And I've got a big brown fella has rolled on this. Oh, adrenaline going. Stay on, stay on. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't like the boats. Suddenly seen that I'm here. Oh. 
we go. Here we go. This is what we want. This is what we want. Oh, yes. <laughs> you. That's what we came here for. A magnificent snowy mountains brown. And super sneaky. He's up here in the tussocks looking around for a feed. And I know the fish are pretty shut down because I've been fishing for a while this morning. And I've had a few half-hearted bumps and little inspections of this lure. And too many years I've been coming up here to find that the northwesterly means the fish are going to be tough. Doesn't mean you can't catch them. You just got to sometimes use a different bag of tricks. The bait guys will still catch them, but if you're in, in the lure game, you're still in there with a the hunt. You can either get them on the troll with the attractors, a bit of flash to bring them to your lures, or technique which has worked well for me over the years is a lipless crank baiting. Get out there with these little hard bodied lures. They rattle, they vibrate, you put them in the right spot, leave them in front of fish. In that case, one little hop up in the shallows. He obviously wasn't too far away and he's come over for a nosy. As soon as I lifted the rod the second time, he'd well and truly eaten it. And there we go. I'm on the board at last. <laughs> and now our lure of choice for this morning, the little vibration bait. You hear that rattling away. Very slim line bait. I like them because for me they're a mixture between a blade and a hard body lipless crankbait. They have quite an intense vibration with the lure. Also got rattles inbuilt. Good casting weight. They cast like bullets. They really do cut through the air. And a little subtle sink which means regardless if you're fishing up in the shallows for some of those cunning but some, and sometimes spooky edge feeders or a bit, bit wider into some of the deeper water, you're going to be able to fish that hole water column up from the shallows, it's out into the deeper stuff under the boat. Some days they're up in the shallows or some, some mornings you're going to find them up in the shallows and as that sun gets up you find the fish retreat out a bit. Doesn't matter, you can fish with these all day and regardless if they're moody, you can usually find you'll agitate a few. I've yapped enough, the fish are biting. Oh, just pitched a little vibro. Into a point, classic fish holding spot. It's been whacked. Boats on the mountain lakes. Come on, dude, what have we got here? That's a brook trout. Oh, wow, look at this. Now that is special. That is very, very special. I haven't caught a lot of these. <laughs> and this is definitely my biggest one. And that is a very, very special fish. I'll calm him down. Get him out of this net and give you a good look at him. And look at that. One of the special surprises of the Snowy Mountains, the brook trout. I haven't caught too many of these in my trout fishing career. It's taken on that little natural vibrate. They also called things like vibration baits. No bib on them. Put them to the bottom and jig them up and down or slowly roll it out. In this case, I pitched it onto a point, hopped it a few times, and I just started rolling it away when it got slammed by this guy, and he well and truly wanted it. I think those natural little rainbow trout markings that you can get in these lures, range of other colors as well, but that one caught my eye. Big spots, very natural color that they'll see around here. And sometimes it's those spots and that rattle which will agitate fish enough to eat it, particularly when the bite's tough like it has been today. And I reckon he's about ready. Go back and join his mates down there. I fished a lot with lipless crankbaits in the Snowy Mountains and I like them for their versatility. You can slow roll them across weed flats or in deeper waters and steeper banks. You can jig them up and down off the bottom and fish a, a, a long range of bottom where fish might be holding. They, they're relatively light lures. They cast like bullets, but they won't sink too quickly. And, and for me, that's a very, very handy feature. Just getting that slow, subtle, fluttering sink sometimes fools the bigger predators when they have heard the rattle and, and, and picked up on the vibration, they've seen this and then it starts subtly sinking down in front of them. That's very often what it takes to come and get them to bite. The first few hours on the water, get out there and just try things. Every third, every three casts, try a different retrieve. Slow hops off the bottom, aggressive rips up off the bottom, slow roll for a while, pause, let it go back down to bottom, sometimes even just the Cast right onto the edge, let it sink for a while, and then a, a relatively medium to fast, slow roll all the way back to the boat. Any given day, they can be tuned into a different retrieve, and it's a case of just working out what they want. Don't think you just gotta go out there and do one style of retrieve. Because fish change their mind every day. 
Yep, good fish, good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Come on. It's playing down deep at the moment. Let's tighten my drag up a bit. What have we got here? Rainbow. They fooled me with those head shakes. Oi. 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 Don't know who's having more fun at the moment. Me or the fish. That's good fun. I'll tell you what, sometimes when a fish decides to come out and eat these vibration baits, style lures, they are agitated and they belt them. That thing nearly ripped the rod out of my hand. All I've done then, just pitched that right up in those tussocks, rolled it out a little bit, stopped, paused it, and started the roll again. This thing just belted it. So much pleasure, light, light spin rod, two to four kilo. Four to eight pound, if that's how you, the, the rods that you're looking at are measured. Just find one that's comfortable for you, pick them up in the shop. Find one that feels right, it's that sort of 610 to 7 foot 4, it's good casting length. 2000 or 2500 size reel, just match them with four or six pound braid. The braid, you really want the braid when you're fishing with these lures just to give you that, that contact because you always want to feel what the lure is doing. You want to be able to, to see when it's hitting the bottom, feel when it's swimming, swimming properly. Lovely, gingerbine, rainbow. Look at, look at the, the resemblance there in that fish to that lure. You can see why they like them. It looks all apart, the baby little rainbow trout. And there's nothing that these bigger fish in these lakes hate more than little bait fish, particularly around that spawn season. Because these little bait fish make a living out of stealing eggs. And predators are honed in to getting rid of them. So once again, the agitation technique. It's definitely, definitely a trick worth having in your bag if you're coming up the Snowy Mountain Lakes. Height and risk situations like this where the weather can turn pretty bad in a fairly short space of time, make sure you've got your life jacket on. I'm out here casting all day. I don't want to be encumbered by a big life jacket. Doesn't mean you're out of the game because with these slimline PFD1s, automatically kick off when you're in the water, sit nicely under a warm jacket and keeps you free to fish all day and be safe at, at the same time. Drifted across a little point, wind behind me. I've just rolled that little vibro across this point. It's been slammed, nice brown. Their range of lipless crankbaits. Any you doubt the trout don't like them, think again. Not enough of us trout anglers are out there using them because they are an awesome lure to use on our introduced species as well.